Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the uh, circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, Canada, for the final race of the PRL iRacing Sunday series with the roof. I'm still Justin, and you guys are in for a real treat as we watch the best race of the season and the final race of the season. It's the best and last race of the season. I've got trading paints turned on as well, so you can see everybody's elaborate paint jobs. Um, I went ahead and switched mine to, I know I was using the uh, kind of yellow, gray, uh, black, color scheme before um, but actually I really like this kind of black and white paint scheme that I found on tradingpaints.com um, so I'm using that for this race I didn't actually have it on when we were racing but I'm, I got it on for the replay which is good enough <laughs> Um, so, of course, this is going to be a rolling start with a reverse grid from a uh, previous race. Uh, the only people that uh, finished behind me were Ashley and Austin. So they are going to be starting from uh, first and second on the grid. Uh, I believe it should be Austin. Uh, yes, Austin is starting from pole uh, with Ashley just behind and then me and then David. And then we have Lauro and then John, and then Spencer, and then PJ. And so now that I have the uh, uh, trading paints thing on, you can actually see uh, the PRL logo that these that the guys all have on their cars. Uh, that's something that I want to do eventually. Um, probably, it, it, I didn't really learn about the trading paints until a few weeks ago, but um, for the Radical uh, SRA, I hope to have a custom paint job um, that will hopefully uh, entertain you guys uh, for these replays. Uh, so you can see see uh, yep the PRL logo is on five of the eight cars we have eight cars uh, for this race um, who who missed the, oh it was PJ PJ missed the first race um, I guess he had something going on I don't remember I feel like he totally said what <laughs> what his problem was but yeah yeah I don't think he yeah he was not in the first race so um, he is uh, gonna make it eight people for this race and Again, it's a uh, rolling start, so we're going to, um, what, what's going on here? Oh. Wow, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> here we go. This is the angle I was looking for that I was at before. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and uh, get things started. So starting from third, uh, certainly feeling very good about my chances for this race. Uh, I felt a lot better in the track edition uh, rather than the um, AWD version. Um, so lights are about to go green here, not just yet. And they are green and we are racing. So we got eight cars, uh, Ash, uh, excuse me, Austin starting from pole, followed by Ashley in the white and black car there, and then uh, David's going around my outside in the blue and white car. And it looks like I'm gonna give him lots of room for turn two, uh, but I was able to carry more speed through there, and I'm staying ahead of him for the moment, but it looks like actually he's gonna have the inside line for this chicane, um, but lots of room given, and a little bit of late braking, and I'm able to hang on to that position. And you can already see how much faster the car seems on the track if you watch the AWD race. Uh, just everything just seems much more frantic and just fast-paced and, and just a lot more exciting. Um, and it was, it was a lot more fun driving this uh, car around the track, certainly. Um, this is a proper race car right here. I know it looks very similar to the other roof that we were just driving, but uh, this is a totally different car. And again, it looks like David's looking up my inside into the chicane, but again, I'm able to hold up hold him off and hang on to that position. Uh, Spencer, last race's uh, winner, uh, he, did, he, he, uh, he started ahead of PJ, because uh, PJ didn't take place in the race, and David, with some very late braking, is actually forced to move to the inside of the hairpin, and that's going to compromise his ex exit significantly, as he's got Loro for company now, uh, very close in his slipstream, with John and Spencer not far behind, and PJ uh, dropping back ever so slightly. As we come to the end of lap one, and it looks like Loro is going to move to the inside of David for the final chicane. As you can see, a little lockup from me, actually. I'm being very, uh, very brave on the braking with this car, as you can be. Um, and it looks like David has just narrowly edged out Loro uh, for that position, as they're pretty much running side by side across the finish line to start lap two. And, gosh, I've already forgotten whose car is who. I'm so, I'm so used to the traditional paint jobs that they have. So Austin still is in the lead. Uh, he's in that very uh, exciting colored car uh, with the pink and the yellow and all that and the lettering and everything. Uh, so that, that is Austin with Ashley just behind. And followed by 
myself, and it looks like actually uh, Spencer has managed to jump several cars. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take that back for a moment, because that is something. Uh, Spencer was in seventh place. Look at this. Spencer's in seventh place as we start lap two. He was in fourth after the, after the, like the first four corners. So let's let's find out what happened with Spencer here. Uh, Loro and David going side by side through turn one there. Oh, and there's a little bit of contact, and Loro's actually been pushed right off the track and has compromised David's exit as well, and that gives Spencer two positions, actually. Um, and, oh, he, he must have gotten ahead of John as well somehow. I, I do apologize. What has happened with John here? Oh, okay, I see. John, uh, John braked a little too late, it would appear and has actually just gone right off the track, um, which is pretty easy to do at that corner. Um, and you have to give all that time back and everything, so he's just he's losing tons of time, unfortunately, all along the street as well. Um, you can see the name Dumpy on, his, uh, on the back of his car there. That's his uh, PRL username. Um, again, I'm going to go ahead and mention this uh, just in case if you guys haven't figured it out from the description and everything. If any of you guys want to sign up for PRL, uh, it's PrecisionRacingLeague.com. And uh, the next season of the iRacing Sunday series is actually going to be free. Uh, this season was $3 to join, which is literally chump change. If you can't afford $3, then I, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so uh, it was $3 to join, which I happily paid for. Um, and I'm very glad that I did, actually. It's, it's been some of the best racing I've had ever, actually. Um, so uh, the next season, though, is no admittance fee, is, is what I'm being told. Um, so if you guys are looking to sign up for uh, iRacing, uh, again, it, it, this is for the iRacing specifically, um, there's no restriction as far as uh, where you can be from. Uh, you know, you don't have to be in uh, America. You don't have to be in Europe. Um, we, we got people from three different continents driving in just this race alone. Um, so certainly there is no... Um, uh, there's no restrictions on any locations, um, and that's and that's because of um, and that's because of the servers. Um, you know, again, you see a car blink out of existence every now and again, but that's rare, uh, very rare. So, um, and they always they always come right back. So you, you got to have a really bad connection to not be able to race in i racing effectively, even against people in different uh, time zones or, or countries or continents even. Um, I've raced people from Australia without any sort of issue, which is one of the major benefits of racing and iRacing, I think. Um, so hanging on to this third place position, and uh, Austin doing a fantastic job hanging on to the lead of this race, actually. Um, looking very strong and like he's got the pace. Um, i got to be honest, you know, I haven't had any real opportunity to get past Austin. Uh, or Ashley, excuse me. Ashley's the car ahead of me. Ahead of me. Austin the car in front of him. Uh, I have not had any, let's see, right here. That's, that's my first time even having a look at possibly passing the two of them. Um, and I wasn't even close. And uh, actually, that's brought Spencer right up behind me now as this race just seems to get closer and closer rather than more and more spread out. So you can see six cars on track right there. Uh, John a little bit behind because of his mistake at the uh, chicane, uh, the final chicane just before the Wall of Champions. It looks like PJ's dropped back quite a bit as well. Um, but aside from those two and uh, their brief issues, um, it's a very close race here as the top six are separated by less than three seconds, I want to say. Um, and it's it's all everyone's got pretty similar pace. I gotta be I gotta be honest. No one is just following behind and trying to find a spot to pass. Um, this is legitimate racing going, and I have gone a little deep into turn two, and that's gonna uh, give Spencer just a little bit of a look. But unfortunately, he didn't get quite a good, quite as good of an exit as I did, and that's allowed me to hang on to that third place position. And I'm losing just a little bit of ground now to Ashley ahead, and. Hopefully I can uh, start making that back. Uh, my hope is that Ashley might start harassing Austin and then the two of them will just slow each other down. Um, and it's not looking like they're really going side by side just yet. And actually David now is going to go side by side with Spencer, which is going to give me just a little bit of breathing, breathing room, uh, very welcomed breathing room. Breaking very late, just just about the, the number two board on the left hand side there as you come into the chicane. Uh, second gear through the chicane, third gear as you come out of the exit. And again, as we come down into this hairpin for lap number three. Oh, and it looks like we 
we've actually had another casualty. Oh, man, I hope I didn't miss that too long ago. Uh, yeah, uh, Loro here uh, has had some sort of issue. Uh, I do apologize, everyone. Uh, hmm, I wonder if he cut something. Oh, yep, yep, he cut that, he cut that chicane. He cut that chicane, so he's got to give time back. And uh, I, I do believe that actually allowed John past him. Yep, so John takes uh, fifth place off of Loro, who is now pretty far behind. I'm, you know, I don't think he's still giving time back. I think he's actually got some sort of issue, possibly. Um, so it looks like Loro has dropped back quite a bit in this race. Um, still hanging on to third, defending from... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, we already saw this. I'm still hanging on to third, defending from uh, Spencer behind in the orange uh, roof there. And right around here. Close enough. Uh, yep, so they're, they're, there they are again, going side by side. And um, again, I'm just really hoping that they can uh, start bugging each other enough so that I can maybe pull out a little bit of a gap on them and focus on the cars ahead uh, rather than the cars behind. Yeah, it looks like I, I, I closed that gap back down to the cars ahead, actually. Very close to Ashley now. Definitely going to be getting a little bit of a slipstream as we go down this very long straight. Uh, hitting speeds of about 160, 170 miles an hour thereabouts. Uh, that's about top speed for this car, though. Uh, the roof can go much faster than that. The straight just isn't long enough. Uh, or, sorry, not the roof. The AWD roof can go uh, a lot faster. Uh, you'll find the top speed of both cars is about the same. Oh, as Ashley has spun it at the final chicane on lap three. And let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. Uh, look pretty straightforward, though. Uh, probably too much curb, I'm going to guess. So, turning in very early, he, t he gets a lot of curb, actually. He hits that very high up curb. You can see I actually missed the curbing entirely, and that, yep, that causes the back end to come out, uh, uh, to come a little bit loose through the second half of the chicane and just spins right around. And that's going to allow me up into second place, not that far behind Austin either. Um, and that's going to move David and Spencer up a position into third and fourth place respectively as well. And Ashley's going to work to spin the car around as John goes by as well, going over those very bumpy sausage curbs. And here comes Loro now through the final chicane. Um, the racing line, though, is to the right, and Ashley's going to be rejoining from the left, so no worries there. And actually, uh, you can see PJ just in the distance there, so he's he's not too far behind either after the multiple mistakes that have been made from uh, various people. So he's uh, hanging in there, uh, just kind of keeping the, char the car on the track. And let's uh, change it up to TV3. And so, uh, again, in second place position as we start lap four. Just behind Austin. So it's uh, Texas for the top two. And again, it looks like uh, actually Spencer and David are going to be going side by side. And it looks like Spencer may have edged him out. Actually, he got the inside line for that chicane, and he's going to take third place. Yep, he has indeed taken third place off of David. They are very similar pace, though, so I'm certainly hoping at this point that David can mount the attack as I'm very bumpy over the curve there. Very aggressive, coming very close to the barrier. I'm, I'm pushing very hard. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, just a couple seconds away from uh, taking the lead of this race, so I'm pushing very hard. As you can see, a little bit of smoke as I lock up. Again, very aggressive over the curves there. And uh, the car is very bumpy, very uh, stiff suspension on this track spec roof, so that's why you really see those pronounced uh, movements when you go over the very large curves. Uh, break it down again, uh, about second, uh, you want to use second gear really for this uh, hairpin corner. It, I, I couldn't find any benefit to using first gear. And it looks like Austin's actually pulled out a little bit of a gap as Spencer's getting a slipstream on me as we finish lap four and come into the final chicane. And using as much of the track as possible. 
And again, you can see six cars uh, really separated by not that much uh, time at all. Uh, I'd say maybe there's five seconds uh, separating the top six cars in this race. As Spencer has a look at my inside, uh, but actually I'm still ahead of him, so I, I move, move ahead. A little bit of a cheeky move, but uh, he wasn't alongside of me or anything like that, so uh, it's all fair. Uh, just being defensive. And certainly that's given uh, David an opportunity to kind of close that gap to Spencer. And we're all three of us kind of closing in to uh, Austin here in the very brightly colored car. Coming now towards the chicane. Loro's getting a little bit close. Oh, oh no, oh no. And it looks like Austin has, or yeah, Austin has just driven right off the track. I'm sorry, you guys with your names that start with A, it just keeps getting, I have problems with it. Um, so he's just driven kind of right off the track. I wonder if that was uh, some especially late braking. Uh, let's have a look. Yep, yep. I, th I think you really want to be breaking just a little bit before that number two sign. Um, and he braked ever so slightly after, maybe only by about five meters or so. But um, he's just carried way too much speed, and that's just going to send him right off the track. And... Not only is he going to lose loads of time, but the game is also going to have to uh, force him to give time back, as if he didn't lose enough time already, um, which is one of the really frustrating parts about the corner cutting system in this game, if you ask me. It's really not fair, because, um, I mean, he lost loads of time already, um, and it, he's just being forced to lose even more time. Um, and I'm not sure that uh, he's got the pace to actually uh, catch and pass uh, Loro, for example, who's just going by right now to take fifth place position off of him. Um, certainly it's going to be difficult. Uh, it's not impossible, but it's it's certainly difficult to um, do any sort of passing without you know DRS and curves and all that sort of thing. So um, you, you really just got to, you have to have the raw pace. Uh, but that has gifted me now the lead of this race. Let's go ahead and do a rear chase cam since there is nobody in front of me and I have taken the lead of this race uh, halfway through lap five, um, probably about 10 laps left or so thereabouts, uh, maybe ever so slightly less. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but actually my car is kind of a carbon fiber color, so it actually has a little bit of a texture to it, the, uh, a carbon fiber texture. It's as if the car is made entirely out of carbon fiber is, is uh, kind of what the idea is there. Uh, as we see Spencer getting very close in the final chicane, uh, but I got a very nice exit and was able to hold on that, to that position. Oh, is David going very deep into turn one and nearly hitting the back of Spencer as Spencer almost does the very same thing with me. And I'm able to hang on to this position at the moment, but he is very close behind and probably looking to make a pass pretty soon here. He does seem ever so slightly faster than me. Uh, I, I would say that I am holding him up ever so slightly. Um, I, I have some pretty good pace as he's taking lots of curve there, and uh, again, lots of curve, and he's carried tons of speed through there. He is very close behind in the slipstream, and I am going defensive to the to the inside for this next chicane, and I've still got him edged out a little bit as I move very close to the outside of the track. Oh, is I, and I get a little bit of a tap from David, actually, um, but I'm still alongside Spencer, so he's forced to give me room, and it looks like I've gotten a little bit of a better exit, and I'm going to have the inside line for this hairpin corner as we're coming down now about 120, 130 miles an hour, breaking down into second gear. David not far behind, and John not far behind him. Oh, and Spencer has gone very wide. That's going to allow, uh, nope. And wow, he, 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 despite going wide, he gets a much better exit than David did. And actually, it looks like John has, uh, John and myself have benefited the most uh, from uh, Spencer going wide there. Uh, David actually had to kind of pull to the inside since he was almost half, half expecting to go side by side. Uh, with Spencer as they came out of the corner, but Spencer was able to get on the gas uh, pretty well and take off and uh, hang on to that second place position in the meantime as we start lap seven. And again, Spencer just seems that little bit faster. And not quite enough room uh, for him to have a look there. And 
John's actually dropped back a little bit. Wow. Wow. As Spencer comes incredibly close to the barrier. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you noticed that. Uh, I noticed that right away. Take a look at how close to the barrier Spencer gets his car. Look at this. Look at that. That is some initial D stuff right there. I mean, you could, I mean, he is almost and David right behind him just as well. The two of them are just coming within an inch of the barrier as they go through that very high speed right hand corner uh, in sector one there. That is just fantastic. I, my car was not that close to the barrier. <laughs> For those of you that uh, went back and looked, it is uh, not even close to uh, that close. I mean, I'm, I'm probably maybe six, seven inches away. I mean, they were practically scraping their mirror on the on the barrier there as they went through. That was fantastic to see just the, the amount of precision um, uh, I know this is the Precision Racing League, but man, that, it, that gives a whole new meaning to the word precision. Uh, that was absolutely fantastic to see. Um, I really get into that sort of stuff. Um, I know some people really like passing, some people like crashes, you know, all of that stuff is interesting to me too. It's all entertainment when it's racing as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, that, that sort of thing is just fantastic for me to see. Um, I really love seeing those sort of narrow misses. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing. It just shows the level of skill. And that's on the right side of the car, by the way, which is much harder to judge when you're in a, a left-hand drive car, um, which these are. So it's even tougher to judge that sort of distance uh, for a right-hand corner. But, I mean, they did it masterfully. So here we come to the end of lap seven, uh, probably about halfway through this race. Still hanging on to first place position. It's not looking like it's gonna be an easy race for me though. I got three guys behind me that are all arguably much faster than me, uh, just based on previous results. And they are all very hungry to win the final race of the season. Certainly as am I, I would love to, to win the final race of the season. And wow, just look at the distance between Spencer and myself. I mean, he is just riding my bumper as we come through some of these corners. Um, let's go ahead and just take a look at this. Nope, that's not the angle I wanted. Uh, gearbox. Yep, <laughs> that's the angle I was looking for. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Holy cow. He's just all over my gearbox. He practically is my gearbox at this point. Um, I mean, just the distance between us is negligible. I mean, it's, it's pretty much nothing. I'm actually liking this camera view, so I'm going to keep this on for a little bit. Um, again, you see Spencer just, just nailing the apex on that corner. Um, and again, just very aggressive over the curve. He's got a very nice run, uh, very nice exit out of this corner. And it looks like I'm actually going to stay to the outside for this one. Yep, so he's got the inside line now. I'm going to try and break as late as I can. But nope, he has taken that position. I'm very close behind him now. And, and I know he's not that much faster than him. So I'm going to try and use this slipstream. Maybe see if I can have a look up the inside of the hairpin as uh, John, uh, excuse me, David is looking to have the, the, the same exact move. And David's got the inside line on Spencer. And we almost went three wide at the exit of that hairpin there for just a moment, actually. I think we were three wide. Let me just take a quick peek. Yep, for, for just about this moment right here. Oh, I wish I could spin it around. I forgot to bring up the camera controls before I started recording. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I mean, we're pretty much three wide at that point uh, through the corner. Um, everybody kind of spreads out with, with their different exit speeds, though. Uh, and it looks like John actually is getting a fantastic run on David now, and he's going to be going uh, side by side with him. David's got the inside line, though. And it looks like Spencer's got the uh, going to try and move around the outside as we go into the final chicane as well. So we're going uh, two sets of pairs side by side. Actually, no, David has edged out uh, John and Spencer has edged me out as well um, so actually uh, Spencer takes the lead of the race again and uh, David is just behind and he's actually gonna move to the inside and he's gonna he's gonna try to take that position but I hang it around the outside is gonna give me the inside line for turn two here 
uh, giving each other lots of room. And John's actually been able to use the raising line to sneak to, uh, sneak up the right hand side of David, and it looks like he's going to have the inside line for the chicane. And they are going to pretty much go side by side. David edges him out, but they lose lots of time in the process, uh, which is going to give me just a little bit of breathing room as I struggle to try and keep up with Spencer in the later stages of this race. Uh, it's going to be very important for him to try and build out a gap uh, because I am currently a buffer between himself. And look at that. Loro has managed to got, uh, get in front of John now. And just it's all happening here late in the race. Got to find out what happened there. And wow, around the outside, and then he's gonna have, no, no he he's, he's slots back in, takes the racing line for this corner. Oh, looks like John's had a little bit of a moment, and that's gonna allow Laura up the inside, and he very easily takes that position, moving himself up into fourth place, just behind David and myself. And just trying my best to see if I can uh, keep up with uh, Spencer in the orange car after he's taken the lead of this race. I'm just about out of his slipstream, unfortunately, though. And David is uh, very handedly in, in my slipstream. Um, he is definitely getting a slipstream off of me, and I might be getting a little bit of a sniff of a slipstream off of uh, Spencer up ahead, but really not much, if anything. Um, I might not be getting any sort of slipstream at all off of him. Now, now, yeah, based on that sort of distance, I don't think I'm getting any slipstream off of him. It, it's marginal at best if I'm getting anything. Breaking down now for the final chicane as we come to the end of lap nine. Sorry, I completely missed another move that Loro made. I apologize about that, guys. I don't know why I keep missing these things. Oh, because it didn't happen in view. That would explain it. So, Loro's in fourth place at the moment, just behind David. Break down for turn one. David's got a little bit wide, got a little bit of oversteer, and Loro just sneaks up the inside. Holy crap. Holy crap. That was a fantastic move. That was very opportunistic and extremely well executed. Um, that was just absolutely amazing, actually. Um, let me switch it to David's view. So you can see David uh, went a little deep into the corner, uh, so Loro's already starting to catch up to him. He sees the oversteer, switches to the inside, and just takes that position. Just lightning reflexes right there from Loro. That was fantastic. Again, he was taking advantage of an, opportun uh, of an opportunity, which wouldn't have presented itself uh, if it had not been for David going deep into that corner and getting uh, starting to lose the back end there. But still, uh, that, that's the whole point of racing. Um, you have to be opportunistic. You have to be able to identify when the car ahead of you is having trouble and where that car is going to go, most importantly. Um, I, I'm willing to bet you if you asked Loro, uh, uh, you know, if you paused that moment in time and, and you were able to... Uh, have telepathy with Loro and asked him, where is that car going? What are you going to do? He would have told you that car is going to slowly go to the outside of the corner and I need to take the inside line. But his brain was able to work that out in literally a split second. In a nanosecond, his brain was able to work that out. And that's that's how you can tell the, uh, a great racing driver um, is when you can when the person is able to predict uh, what's going to happen and not just react to what is currently happening that is that is the mark of a true amazing racing driver and I'd, I'd say it's something that Fernando Alonso in Formula 1 has in spades Fernando Alonso doesn't just know what he's going to be doing two or three corners up the road he knows what you're going to be doing two or three corners up the road um, and he is 99% accurate so um, and that's what makes a, a fantastic racing driver so uh, Loro does a great job takes third place off of David 
fantastic racing and he is very close behind me now as well uh, and it, it, I gotta say his car is looking very angry with all the damage that he that he's sustained on that car so uh, it's very intimidating uh, just how quickly he was able to catch me and then to see that he has damage on top of that um, and I think I may have just cut that corner did I no good I did not cut that corner uh, I was a little worried about that for a second, but uh, I have uh, actually pulled out a little bit of a gap to Lauro there through that chicane um, very nicely through there. As he's going to have a look up the inside, I get a little bit better of an exit, though, so I'm able to edge him out for now. But he is so close behind right now that the amount of slipstream he's going to be getting is just fantastic. Um, and that's definitely going to give him the speed that he needs in order to move along the inside for the final chicane. Coming to the end of lap 10. Trying to break as late as possible to see if I can edge him out. And we go side by side practically through the final chicane. I'm able to edge him out and just barely hang on to the second place position. Uh, all the while, Spencer must be just really enjoying, uh, yeah, he's, he's just enjoying a, a little bit of a lonely race up at the front. Laura's going to try and have a look up the inside of turn one, but it, uh, I, it kind of compromises his line for turn two. And actually, David now is mounting an attack back on Loro. And it looks like he's just going to be going, uh, they almost went side by side, but it looks like Loro was being very defensive and uh, hangs on to that position in the meantime as David actually has to tap on the brakes uh, so to avoid hitting Loro. And it looks like Loro's going to try the same move on me that he tried on some other people, or that he tried uh, in other uh, earlier in this weekend, uh, trying along the, the inside there. Um, but. Uh, not able to take that position on, on this occasion as the second, third, and fourth are running in very close proximity now. And again, breaking as late as possible, and there is the corner cut, I am fairly certain. And yep, yep, so I cut the corner there, and unfortunately had to give some time back. Uh, but I am going to slot right back in in fourth place position just behind David. So uh, it was a very minor cut. In fact, one of the most minor cuts I've ever had. Um, I've never had the game ask me to give back that little amount of time, actually. Um, I was pretty surprised by it. Um, so you can see here, uh, if you go over the big curb, uh, you can see I just barely touched the grass over the big curb. Uh, that counts as a corner cut or an off track or both, uh, depending on how you look at it. Um, and so uh, the game forced me to give some time back. Uh, so it was at this point in the race that I was telling the other drivers over Mumble that uh, I uh, had cut the corner and that I was uh, being forced to give some time back. Uh, so I was telling them that I was going to be moving to the right side of the track uh, so that they weren't running into the back of me or anything like that. Um, so uh, I was I actually told the other drivers that I would be staying to the right and that they can go ahead and just go to the left. So uh, we see Loro go by on the left hand side and followed shortly thereafter by David. And there he goes. Uh, and then the game told me I'd given back enough time so I could go ahead and uh, push full throttle now. Uh, and I'm just behind David and I've got pretty good pace at this track so I'm pretty optimistic about my chances of uh, possibly uh, still finishing in a podium position despite dropping down to fourth after that corner cut. Uh, getting a pretty nice slipstream off of David at the moment who is not getting a very good slipstream off of Loro who is not getting a very good slipstream off of uh, uh, Spencer up at the front, so uh, gaining just uh, a little bit of time as we go through the final chicane. David is very aggressive through the second half of the chicane. Uh, lifts uh, the left side of the car up off the ground, and uh, that's gonna just give me a little bit more, a little bit of extra speed on the straight as we come down uh, to start lap 12 and go through uh, turn number one. And again, uh, it really seems like I've got pretty good pace on David at the moment. I don't outright seem faster, um, but uh, if I can try something opportunistic, uh, that, such as what Loro did earlier, uh, then certainly I could find myself in another podium paying position, uh, which would be very nice. Certainly, because again, uh, remember, this is the last race of the season. New season starting in three, four weeks, something like that. Um, it's going to be with a different car type entirely. It won't be with the roof anymore. As uh, David has had a very good couple of corners there, pulls out a little bit of a gap as Loro is uh, going up the inside of Spencer as they come into this uh, high speed chicane here. And uh, Spencer just narrowly edges him out with the inside line. And uh, that's going to give David just uh, the smallest of opportunities to try and catch up to them as he's probably getting getting a pretty nice slipstream on Loro at the moment, uh, but Loro's getting a fantastic slipstream uh, off of Spencer currently. And 
and going through the hairpin. Uh, got on the gas a little late for that. I could have I pushed uh, full throttle just a little bit sooner and carried a little bit more speed onto the straight. So I'm losing a little bit of time as we go down this. Uh, talking hundreds of seconds, not nothing too major. Um, but again, that gap is starting to build as uh, the two cars ahead of me are getting some, some pretty nice slipstream at the moment. Uh, breaking at about the three number three board. And again, David, very aggressive over those curves. And again, it looks like Loro is going to go side by side with Spencer. He's going to have the inside line for turn one. <coughs> Excuse me. And Spencer hangs it around the outside. He's got the inside line for turn two, and he's going to hang on to that first place position, all the while allowing David and myself to close in on the two of them. Second gear for this chicane. Into third gear. Up to fourth. Just a little bit of a lift through there, nothing major. Down to second gear for this corner. I'm going to take a lot of curb there, and not quite as much curb uh, for this one. Again, got on the gas a little late there. I could have carried more speed through there, so that was a missed opportunity. And again, Loro is going side by side with Spencer. He's got the inside line as they come in through this chicane. And wow, they're going to stay side by side. It looks like Spencer has just narrowly edged him out, but Loro's gotten a little bit better of an exit, and David is joining in on the party now. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'm actually going to jump up ahead, and we're going to watch this from David's point of view. And just about going side by side with Spencer and Loro, and David's got the, the racing line, and Spencer and Loro are in fact side by side now. Looks like Spencer's gotten a little bit better of an exit. Loro's gonna have to slot in and get a little bit of slipstream, but no, he doesn't. He's just gonna stay to the right, and they're gonna be going side by side into the final chicane here. Oh no, oh no, and Spencer has cut the corner. I'm not sure if he braked late for that or what happened, but he's just gone right into, let me see. Um, again, the breaking point around this is, is about the number three board. It looks like he braked actually at about the same time as Loro. Um, let's take that back just a little bit. Yep, I mean, they, <laughs> they hit the brakes almost at the exact same time. It's almost like it was choreographed. That's fantastic. Um, so they, they break at pretty much the same point, but it just looks like, uh, yeah, maybe Laura was more aggressive with the downshifts possibly, but uh, just Spencer was not able to slow the car down in time. Uh, this is the final lap of the race. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that as we came on to lap 13. This is the final lap of this race. Um, and unfortunately, Spencer has cut the final chicane uh, as we go into the final corner here. And actually, I'm going to move back on board with myself now. And let's switch to this one. Yep, so you can see John is very close behind. And he's going to try a dive bomb up the inside. But unfortunately, he braked way too late. And he ended up cutting that corner as well. And Spencer ended up having to give some time back. So uh, he's going to have to lose that on third place to me. So I do end up coming home in third place to take a podium position for the final race of the season. Uh, but even more amazing than that was the battle for first and second as they crossed the line. Take a look at this. So David and uh, Laura were actually, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I am going to, oops, switch to Laura. We're going to do a chase view. Actually, let's do a rear chase. So uh, Spencer cuts the corner, and that gives uh, Laurel the lead, basically. But uh, he's got to, to kind of avoid Spencer. David is able to carry more through, more speed through the chicane, and he's actually uh, just narrowly misses out on that uh, on that win by the smallest of margins, the absolute smallest of margins. Uh, it's not the first time you guys are seeing a photo finish here in the PRL iRacing League, um, but this is the first photo finish for the win. Uh, that I that that I'm aware of anyway. There may have been another one and I just missed it. But um, in the end, they were separated by only uh, by less than three one hundredths of a second. Point zero two eight seconds separate separated the two of them. Um, so an absolutely amazing race, um, especially from Loro. Uh, it's got to be said that that really was fantastic. Um, I was thinking that I might be able to come home with the win. Um, I you know I was feeling pretty good about my pace. I was in the lead of the race and all that stuff, but um, I just I, I wasn't so sure that I was gonna be able to hold off all three of those guys uh, for for that long. So 
in the end, very happy with uh, third place finish, and um, a little disappointed that I didn't get the win, uh, but still just very, very happy with the season overall as well. Um, if any of you guys are iRacers out there and you're looking for a league to join, um, again, next season it's going to be free. There's no admittance fee. Even when there was an admittance fee, it's $3, which is more than agreeable. Um, so uh, no, no admittance fee for this one, though. Uh, it's going to be with the Radical SR8, which is kind of like a Lama car. It's not an open wheel, but it's a single seater. It's an actual racing car. It's not a it's not a road car that's been turned into a racing car, and that's what the roof is. The, ro- the roof is just a Porsche that's been turned into a race car. Uh, the Radical SR8 is a, uh, a race car built from the ground up uh, for racing specifically. It's got aerodynamics. It's got uh, you know lots of downforce and stuff like that. Um, also, next season is going to be a mixture of road and oval. I won't be taking part in probably any of the oval races, um, but certainly all of the road races I'll be taking part in, which will probably mean that in the championship I won't be doing very well. Um, But again, this is all for fun. And I had a blast uh, this season. I was um, a little hesitant uh, going in uh, to the beginning of the season about what possibly it would be like. Um, Certainly when you start any new league or game or anything like that, you have uh, a mindset about what it's going to be like. Um, This is not what I expected. This has been fantastic. Um, Every race weekend, regardless of my personal performance, um, it's been just a fantastic job from all the drivers, everybody involved, very professional professional very respectful um if if you're the type if you're watching this you're the type of driver to uh you know uh uh drive dangerously and uh you know not not care about uh the the other people on the track with you then prl is not the place for you (laughs) um prl is is a very mature community of very experienced racers um who you can trust going side by side with um this was my first season ever and and uh, doing I first ever uh, league racing with I racing, um, and it was it was absolutely amazing. It was fantastic. Um, I was able to be competitive pretty much from the word go. Uh, aside from Okayama, um, I don't really count Okayama because uh, I just really was not prepared for that for those two races. So um, I really hope that you guys uh, enjoyed the. Um, uh, all, all of this season from, from Box 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 Gaming. I really want to say thank you all for, for watching these videos and I I've, I've hope you've enjoyed them as much as I've enjoyed making them um, and I hope you watch next season for the Radical SR8. Um, those races will be a little bit longer. There's only going to be one race per weekend. A little bit longer races with uh, setup stuff. I'll have a teammate uh, as well um, so it'll, it'll be pretty interesting. Um, so thanks again for watching guys. Bye bye.